Cypress versus Playwright versus Selenium. And uh, it will be uh, presented by two of us. Uh, I am Radek Bednařík and my colleague is Krzysztof Hadash and uh, we will briefly introduce ourselves. So Krzysztof, why don't you yeah. go first? Uh, so I've spent uh, about two and a half years in testing so far uh, and I'm really keen about test automation in general. Um, uh, the tools I mostly use is robot framework uh, with various libraries and uh, cypress.io which has really brought the world of JavaScript testing closer to me and you can absolutely find me on LinkedIn. All right, thanks. And regarding me, I work in Tessena as well as a test automation engineer and I'm in Tessena like two years from, or something, two and a half years basically. And uh, currently I'm working in a agile team of uh, automotive company and I am in the team which uh, works on the web tracking. And my tools, uh, I started uh, uh, with Python and I used frameworks like Behave or, or PyTest. And then like year and a half ago, uh, because of the project, basically, I was forced to <laughs> start to learn a new language like JavaScript and uh, switch to WebDriver IO first. And then I had to switch again and uh, I started with Playwright in combination with Mocha and, and uh, Chai. So, and yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn, LinkedIn as well. <laughs> okay. So about, uh, about the next hour uh, or so, so first, we would like to present you the high-level overview of the type of the frameworks this workshop is about. So Cypress, Playwright, and Selenium uh, 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 library, JavaScript library, and then we will move on to the interesting part. That means the code, and uh, we will we have prepared uh, nine different test cases, example test cases, and uh, all of them are written. Uh, in within this respective uh, tools or frameworks. Uh, we have uh, published the solution uh, in the repository uh, on GitLab. It's publicly available. So you can you can uh, visit uh, this link and uh, and download it and, and look at it and play with it if you are interested. Uh, uh, the code itself is written against uh, our own uh, Tessena web page, our company. Uh, most of it, so hopefully the, today there will there will be no outage. <laughs> otherwise, uh, yeah, uh, and uh, it will be it will work like this. We will we will use uh, we will we will show you the the test case. We will show you the solution for the for uh, in each of the frameworks, and then you will if you if you of course want you will vote in the Slido which uh, implementation is the best. Uh, according to your opinion. And uh, then the goal of the webinar is basically determine the winner, uh, who, which, which uh, tool will get most of the votes, uh, will be the winner of the workshop. Uh, there is one disclaimer, uh, the workshop is planned for, planned for one hour. Uh, we will try to manage it within one hour, uh, within one hour but in case uh, we will not make it, we will go over one hour and if some of you have to leave, uh, don't worry, the session is recorded so you can access it after that um, anytime. So before we begin, please don't forget to mute your mics. Please, if uh, somebody didn't uh, do that, uh, join the Slido, uh, hashtag Tessena webinar. Uh, there will be Q&A session uh, at the end. Uh, of the of the workshop, so uh, it will be done via Slido as well. So you can write the questions there already if you are, if you want to, and or during the during the workshop. And in the end, we will we will uh, try to answer them if we will know the answer. Uh, if uh, will happen that the font of the of the code will be too small, we try to have it as big as possible. But uh, if some of you will have a problems, don't forget you can zoom in the Microsoft Teams directly yourself. Just use control and mouse 
uh, wheel to zoom in. So yeah, you can do that. And now let's start with a high level overview of the frameworks. So first one is Cypress and that's for Christoph. So Christoph. So Cypress runs on Node.js on JavaScript and uh, it's basically a um, mature framework. It has everything you would expect of a test automation framework. It uh, does run uh, with the browser in the browser with the front end application in one loop, which means it has access to the application and to everything that happens in the browser. Uh, well, tests are executed purely in JavaScript, which means uh, the page is actually uh, manipulated by the browser itself. Uh, it has a pretty nice uh, reporting tool, which is the Cypress dashboard. And yeah, as I said, uh, it has access to everything. So that's uh, that's the approach for Cypress, and here is a nice picture I found on the official website, uh, which may or may not be advantageous for a new user or any user of Cypress in general. Okay, now it's my turn. So uh, first, uh, I would like to like. Um, uh, show you or 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 describe you the testing setup uh, used in in this workshop for the playwright and Selenium because I did uh, both of these uh, uh, frameworks or tools. Uh, so the technology used is uh, pretty the same. Uh, so both of them runs uh, run on Node.js. Both of them are using Mocha JS uh, JS as test runner. Uh, and then, of course, for Playwright, we have a Playwright library, and for Selenium, we have the JavaScript version of Selenium library. For assertions, we are using Chai, and uh, and uh, there is also a HTML and reporter, uh, which is uh, Mocha Awesome. It's one of the, I would say, better uh, reporters uh, for, for Mocha JS. And uh, I did some approach because, uh, unlike Cypress, uh, you have to combine at least until uh, yesterday, which I will tell you on the next slide. You have mm -hmm. to basically playwright or Selenium are just libraries for the browser automation. So you have to uh, combine test runner and the library and uh, reporting all, all together by yourself. It's not like one package as in 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 Cypress. So uh, there are some some setup. There is some setup needed. So I had to prepare some global setup, tear down some hooks, just basically to to have it effectively running and to use effective to use possibilities provided by Playwright for for parallel execution and so on, and also to avoid a boilerplate in the in the in the test uh, uh, test uh, cases code and uh, also some parameterization uh, in the configuration files and it's in TypeScript. Um, yeah, so now uh, about Playwright. Playwright is fairly, I would say, new uh, library, test automation, uh, test browser uh, automation, or browser automation library, sorry. Uh, it's developed by Microsoft and uh, it basically allows you to test uh, or automate Firefox, WebKit, or Chromium. It runs on Node.js and it distributes uh, its own browser binaries, uh, which are evergreen. So you don't have to take care of uh, having your own browsers set up. You don't have to worry about web drivers and, and, and so on. Uh, it uh, provides you single API for all of these browsers. So uh, there is nothing, no methods which are browser dependent, options which are browser dependent and so on. Everything is the same. It has a very powerful selector engine. You can uh, select uh, elements almost uh, any way you want. And uh, it allows you to, to do basically all purpose testing. So single pa uh, page applications, multi-tap cross-site iframes, you can touch the network, uh, uh, anything. And what's changed yesterday was that uh, Microsoft published uh, own test runner yesterday. So now uh, you should use Playwright with uh, with uh, the native test runner. Unfortunately, it was yesterday evening, so <laughs> I wasn't able really to change uh, the workshop uh, this late. So uh, yeah, uh, we couldn't use it for this uh, for this uh, workshop. So sorry about that. 
And the last thing uh, to mention is that the playwright is not only in JavaScript, uh, also it's the, I would say, main language, uh, but it's also available in Python, Java, or uh, C Sharp. Selenium, everyone knows Selenium. So very, very, very quickly, I used uh, Selenium beta uh, library for, for this, uh, for this uh, workshop. However, it's based, the, the principle is the same. So you create driver instance for the browser, you set up some cap capabilities or emulation if you need, and then you chain and nest methods to drive the front end of the browser to do what you want. And you need to set up the browser binary, set up the uh, web drivers and, and so on. What I would point out is that comparing, for example, to Cypress or to, to uh, Playwright is that the documentation of the uh, Selenium and specifically the JavaScript library is very poor. And, and uh, sometimes uh, this is personal opinion. You don't have to agree with it, of course, is that sometimes the conf it's, it's pretty confusing, uh, has confusing API or types. Uh, but that's that's personal opinion. A last thing, just to show you overview how it may seem complicated, but to leverage the playwright uh, capabilities to parallel execute. This is the scheme uh, how is set up, how the playwright is set up with Mocha. Basically, you start the Mocha via npm script. You will load the configuration data. Then you will use the global global test setup to start the browser server. Because you want to use, you want to start only one uh, browser be, because it's slow and uses a lot of memory. And then via root hooks, uh, you will start some, something called browser context, which are basically uh, isolated sessions of the browser, which are cheap and fast to create. And then within this context, you will run parallel in parallel those um, test uh, execu uh, test uh, files. And after all that's done, you will shut down shut down the browser. Uh, Selenium is uh, simpler. You will just start the test runner again, load the config data, and then you will uh, use root hooks to start the browsers for each test run in parallel. And this is different in a way. Uh, the, the, the main difference is that you start new browser for each uh, file run in parallel. So it is using uh, more resources. And that's all. I was talking a lot. Sorry about that. <laughs> and now we will get to the actual actual code. So the first test case we prepared is the situation when you will visit the the home page or the or the uh, page, and you want to check that the consent banner, uh, basically that annoying cookie pop up, is displayed on your first visit. It looks like this. You have this page, and then here on the on the bottom, you have that banner, and we are verifying that the button "Yes, I accept" is visible. So, here we have the uh, comparison of three uh, solutions. On the left is Cypress, in the middle is Playwright, and on the right is Selenium. So we will start with Cypress. Uh, so, Christopher, if you could describe it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh... So one thing I've done before um, actually writing this test was setting up uh, the base URL in Cypress JSON, which means uh, that the CI visit command uh, takes me to the base URL that I've defined, which is tessana.com. And then I simply get the context of the accept cookies button and I make an assertion that it's visible. Uh, Cypress automatically waits until the page is fully loaded and uh, the assertions such as assertion based on visibility has uh, four seconds uh, timeout. So it's plenty of time to assert it after the page is loaded. Yeah, it would be sometimes uh, uh, surprised that sometimes four seconds is not enough, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, uh, regarding the playwright, uh, it's it's a little bit more code, it's a little bit more verbose. Uh, that's because I'm using the before hook mainly to, to um, structure it a little bit uh, that we are going to the page. Uh, the the as I said, uh, the command this page go to basically uh, 
relates to the this is the is the instance of the test runner. Uh, the page is the is the instance of the browser page, and the go to is method to go to the given URL. So we are visiting the URL, and then uh, it is uh, just the testing function. And we are using expect uh, function of the chai library to test the assertion. And inside it is again the page uh, instance as method is visible. So we are testing that uh, the button is visible. You can see that I'm using XPAT selectors. Uh, I prefer uh, XPAT, it's my personal preference. So it's again a little bit more verbose. And uh, Again, it's the same as a Cypress. Most of the methods, uh, when you want to check something or click something in Playwright or or select and so on, there they are auto waiting um, as well. So you don't have to manually wait uh, as in the next example, which is Selenium. Uh, again, in the before, we will we have the driver. We will get to the Tessena. Uh, page and then we have to resolve the element. So here you can see in in uh, as a standard in Selenium, you have to wait until element is located and you have to explicitly use the by XPath if you are using XPath. So you can see the command is much longer and is nested. So yeah, and then you will you will uh, assert that button is uh, displayed. So uh, yeah. This is the comparison in this of this uh, of this test case in these three tools, and now it's time for you to vote. Uh, so, which implementation is the best? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it's quite short and simple, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, you don't have to resolve the context of another browser or another page because that doesn't really exist in Cypress. <laughs> Which in this case, it is hard to say if that's advantage or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, in this in this in this case of this simple simple test case, like yeah, yeah it's, it's you just say uh, it's... a bit cleaner, a bit faster to get it running. I yeah. agree with the with the results. <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> Cypress is your tool. Yeah, uh, but sometimes sometimes the the simple can be deceiving, you know. <laughs> All this, yeah. Okay, so as you can see, Cypress like 80 80 percent, uh, Selenium yeah. 30, Playwright measly uh, six percent. So we still only yeah. have uh, about 16 votes, and there are about 50 people in the meeting. So I think we should wait uh, just a little bit longer. I I don't actually see how many people uh, is there. So yeah, I will definitely wait. So let's uh, wait at least until 25. Okay. Or actually, so guys, come on. Come on, at least <laughs> half of you should vote. Yeah, because in maybe the we end should, we maybe all... we should uh, we should uh, get there uh, a fourth option like I don't care or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, and it's important to vote because in the end we'll take the total votes and determine the winner based on the total amount of votes. So 25. Okay, we put the benchmark. <laughs> Perfect. So I think uh, we can move on now. Okay. Thank you all for uh, voting. To those of you who voted. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, uh, I see one comment which I want to address now uh, from Maros Jurish. Sure. I hope. I see the see the uh, saying the name right that he says I believe that we can write that Selenium playwright code more simpler if we want. Yes, of course you can, uh, because lots of it is uh, if you want to write it like a basic script without the test runner, that's one thing. It would be much more simpler uh, because all that syntax from the test runner will go away, and also it's in TypeScript, so that would go away as well. The type declarations. And of course, uh, if you are better better coder than me, then uh, of course uh, you can make it even more simpler as well. So yes, that's always there are always options to make it more simple and shorter. Uh, this case number two, uh, contact form will not send. Uh, actually, unless... I would like to follow up yeah. uh, that question. Uh, 
I just want to clarify one thing. Uh, we've decided not to use any design uh, patterns on the code. So you could see how it looks in its like pure form. So the, the differences are obvious. Because if if we would wrap it in, in methods, if we would use some design pattern, you wouldn't really be able to see uh, the differences so so clearly. Yeah, I'm using hooks, that's for sure, because I would have then the code would be much more longer using Mocha and it would be uh, even more difficult to provide a comparison on the presentation, guys. Yeah. So that's why uh, I have a hooks there. Uh, yeah, uh, that's unfortunate side effects if you if you don't have one package with a test runner and 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 everything. So, yeah, if if you don't like it, I'm sorry, uh, but <laughs> that's how it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, that obviously uh, I personally and I would not uh, write the tests on on like project on production in this way, uh, but I would use page page object patterns and then so on. So it would look different. So the test case number two, uh, we want to verify uh, that contact form will not send unless uh, the email is provided, which we means we have this form. And if we fail the name and we will fill the message and we will click the send button, uh, uh, the form will not send because email is missing since it's uh, mandatory. So here we have, uh, he will we'll show it a little bit different because the code is uh, uh, bigger and if we put it all together, you wouldn't see really anything. So uh, Christoph will describe it in presentation and meanwhile, I will prepare it in the IDE for the remaining two, two uh, uh, cases. So Christoph, please. So after the pretty simple test case uh, one, where we've just made a bas basic assertion after visiting the base URL, here we visit uh, the base URL slash contact, which means tessana.com slash contact uh, URL. And then uh, we get, uh, get on with some further interactions such as typing. So uh, uh, I always have to get uh, first into the context of the element that I want to work with, uh, which in this case is the field name and field message, which I f fill in with the CI type method uh, with values of Cypress tester and Cypress message. Then I get into the context of the submit button and I click it. So that's what I do before the test even begins. And I have two tests. Uh, one uh, makes sure that the submit button is still visible because if the email form would be sent uh, the submit button disappears and another one uh, is making sure that the error message is uh, properly displayed so uh, it's a another simple uh, visibility assertion so uh, altogether pretty pretty simple still okay so now it's my turn, uh, which as you may already uh, predict, it will be not as, as simple as in Cypress. Uh, again, it's more verbose. So uh, uh, guys, I will try to uh, have it a little bigger. Hopefully it's readable. Uh, don't forget you can zoom in in Teams as well. So on the left, we have the playwright solution. On the right, we have the we have the um, uh, Selenium solution. So we will start with the left. Uh, sorry, I don't want to debug it. Uh, so right like this. So on the on the on the left again, uh, we have the, the we have similar approach. Uh, again, we will first go to the page, then we will fill the name. Uh, in in uh, playwright the comment is fail, then we will fill the message, and then uh, I am using one additional test which is here, and I am testing that uh, if I click the send button, that uh, the form will not be sent, uh, like there will be no request sent, because if the form is sent, uh, there will be request in the network. It's just another showcase, basically, uh, what what can you do with the, with the playwright? 
and uh, for that because again we are not using any page objects any any patterns i have here uh created a helper function so it's not it's not too messy here so basically here is just the predicate to verify that uh, if the form is sent or not and the playwright has a wait for request method where you will basically just provide the url or regex and you will wait for a given time and if the request is returned you will hear in we are written true if not you will return false because this method uh, if the timeout uh, is reached it will throw so it's a little bit a dirty trick to return false we had a catch error but uh, but it works and so we have again uh, first test as same as as before so we are testing if the button is still visible we are testing if the if the uh, error message is visible and then uh, the the additional test if the request is not sent so the status variable which we uh, assign is is uh, false and here you can see in the playwright how you work with with something you want to wait you will use promise all and because every almost every method in playwright is promise so you have to await it uh, it's an async await uh, framework so basically you will start the waiter and then you will uh, do the, do the action and then you will retrieve the, the the status of the of the of the predicate and then here we can verify it so that's the that's the playwright uh, in the in the selenium uh that again uh, we will visit the page we will retrieve the element uh we have to scroll to it and this is this was this is a little bit annoying if you don't have any like but uh, page object patterns or, or or something when you can do your uh, wrapper for this because javascript uh, selenium library does not have the scrolling method so you have to execute the script and scroll like this and then you will again fill it uh then you will fill the message and then you will click the the button um and then we will test if uh, the the button is still visible and then we will test if the email error message uh, was was displayed again you have to every time explicitly wait and and uh, uh, if displayed and as you can see i don't have here the request test because selenium uh, cannot do it basically it should uh, there are some articles that selenium 4 will have the methods to work with the dev tools on chrome so you should be able to do it but uh, however in the documentation of this library or even on the main site of selenium i didn't find anything uh, regarding this uh, functionality so i take it that it's not still for the public use or or something so uh, I I didn't use it. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. So that's that. I will switch to the poll. So again, guys, I'm curious. Like the playwright uh, solution there. How, how many? 80, <laughs> 90? <laughs> I mean, what you do in Playwright is basically the same as what I've done in uh, in Cyprus. Um, which is nice. <laughs> it's nice because those are simple test cases. We should have yeah, realistic course, art course. for it, you know. <laughs> we'll get to, to the more complicated ones uh, soon enough. So, okay, uh, guys. We'll wait again till like 25. 25, say. 25. We need 25. Okay. That's, that's the rule. <laughs> okay, Cypress so only 70. It's like going down. <laughs> that, that, that was too bad. Work. That, that was not a good work. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Uh, I see some questions in the chat, please, guys, uh, for the for the uh, questions for us. 
uh, if you joined late, please use uh, Q and A section in Slido uh, and put your questions there. We will be doing the Q and A at the end of the of the workshop. So so please uh, uh, put the, your questions there because we are pretty uh, tight on time. So we have to do it like this. I'm I, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I I don't think we will get to 25, uh, Christopher. So so we have to move on right. because sure. it's already half half, and we are on the test case number two. So we should probably speed it up, and not to spend uh, too much time on each line of the code, basically. Sure. Uh, so uh, let's go to the test case number three. Uh, uh, now we will be we will be working with the network uh, of the browser. So we want to verify that uh, Google Analytic requests are sent if you provide the the, the consent. So you will click that uh, yes I consent or something like this on the on the banner. And then looks like this. So basically we will be we will want to touch this request. Uh, which you see on the on the screenshot and basically verify that it is there. Uh, it's a, it's a simple not not nothing nothing more. Uh, yeah. So we only have two examples in this time because Selenium really can't do it. Um, so we have only Cypress and Playwright. So Christophe, please go first. All right. So basically, at first I uh, spy on the request itself. Uh, using the get method and the regex argument for matching the URL. Then I simply visit the page and click the button confirm, which will fire the actual request. And in the test, which is the it section, uh, you can see that I wait uh, for the response and then make an assertion to uh, that the status code is 200. So still pretty, pretty simple. Cypress automatically well, when you declare uh, a request, it automatically spies all the all the requests on that uh, URL, and then you can use it to wait for the response. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thanks, Christophe. In my case, I did it a little bit differently. I could use the method wait for request. Uh, but uh, I uh, do it like that. I wanted to just to check that the request uh, will be will be caught on, and and I wasn't really interested if it will return basically 200. I just wanted to know if it will be sent. So I just uh, I just do, I did uh, created the reg regex regex variable. Sorry, it's a terrible uh, for me to 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 say it. And then I just uh, uh, before I visited the page, I will I I, I started a listener, and basically uh, the it's the page on method which will. Uh, once the request event is emitted, you can you can listen for several events uh, on uh, in the playwright like request, response, uh, um, and and close and so on. There are you can you can look it up on the on the playwright documentation page. And in this case, uh, it will just listen to all request um, events. And if uh, the the request has the the URL passes the regex regex check. It will be pushed to the container, and then uh, once the listener is set up, we will go to the page, we will do a click, and then we will just verify that we caught the request. Uh, so I am not verifying the 200. I just want to know that it was sent, whether it uh, was like a response to the, this 200. I am not interested in that in this case. So that's the that's the this test this case, and again. In this case, ignore the Selenium probably. Uh, <laughs> if <somebody> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm wondering test, if somebody would will... test for your uh, attention. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, I'm expecting the votes for Selenium. Okay. There it is. <laughs> somebody, somebody obviously trolling. <laughs> 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 Some hardcore Selenium fans in the uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm not surprised. Uh, 
like when we prepared this and I saw the, the comparison, like it was, oh, yeah. it was pretty clear <laughs> who, will, who will win, uh, basically. <clears throat> Yes, of course. Yeah, you can do you can do anything with the with the networks, uh, network communication. So uh, to Marosh, uh, yes. So you can you can check it definitely. No problem. Uh, okay, so we will move on. Twenty is is fair fair uh, enough higher number. So Cypress again. Selenium surprisingly uh, is in the second place. <laughs> and uh, we are going to test case number four. So now we want to uh, show you guys how to work with cookies. So it will be again very simple test, nothing nothing uh, too complicated. We just want to check that the GA, again Google Analytics cookie, is set when you visit the site. So uh, it's this this cookie, uh, which which is of the Google Analytics uh, cookie. Uh, when you have, if you uh, have implemented, of course, on your on your page. Again, the code on my side would be uh, bigger uh, for some reasons. I will show you. So, Christoph is uh, here. Uh, uh, he will sh he will explain it, and I will prepare the the my part. So, Christoph, please. All right. Uh, so this is. Pretty, pretty simple, I think. Uh, you can get the cookie uh, via CY get cookie command. Uh, you pass the cookie name and then you can well work with the object further. Uh, so here, what I do here is make uh, some assertions. And that's pretty much, uh, pretty much it. So pretty straightforward still. Yep. Thank you. Now it's my turn again. On the left, it's the playwright. On the right, it's Selenium. Again, maybe a little bigger. Uh, so again, uh, because playwright, playwright, uh, since he really has access to the whole browser, and he can work multi-page and cross-domain. So when you call uh, the the cookie uh, uh, method to, to get the cookies, you will get cookies across the board. So not only one page. And in that case, uh, if, for example, the GA cookie is usually set uh, uh, across the multiple pages, or the, if there is iframe and, 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 and so on, depends on the implementation. So you will get multiple. You will get array of the of the of the cookies with the same name. And uh, for that, I have mm -hmm. I, I have here a, a custom method to get exactly the cookie I want. It's a little bit longer. I reuse it from from the from the project I am uh, working on, like like uh, for Tessena. So that's why I just show you very briefly because it's it's uh, pretty long. And you have to do the f filtering and and so on for yourself, but that's the that's the price for the for the versatility basically that uh, you have the access for the cookies across across uh, multiple pages and 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 URLs basically uh, or iframes in the page and 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 so on. Now, uh, it, otherwise, it's it's pretty the same or or similar. Again, it's just the syntax is different. So you will go to the page, you will get the cookie, and uh, uh, you will specify the name and the uh, and the domain for which for which domain you want that cookie. And then we are verifying the same uh, assertions as as Christoph did. Uh, on the on the Selenium side, uh, this was this is at least from my point of view is a little bit annoying because you have to test you get to get cookie via this. You have to instantiate this options object, and then you have to use the method get cookie, uh, which is not that straightforward as as uh, in the other two frameworks. And then uh, the test is again the same. So that's that. And let's see how many percent Cypress gets this time. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, still pretty, pretty clean, pretty, pretty readable. Everything was 
basically ready within it. You don't have to sell it like that that much, you know. <laughs> it, will, it will be. I mean, without, the code speaks uh, for itself. So <laughs> I truly don't. But I guess uh, now we get to the trickier, trickier water. It's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's the weakest weakest uh, percentage so far. Uh, well, maybe the, the tide is turning slowly. Uh, I don't think so, no. <laughs> maybe it will, though, because soon we'll uh, move on to the next case, uh, which is about uh, not only, but as well, multi-tab and multi-domain uh, browser automation, which Cypress really doesn't have a way to do it. Yeah, it's a it's a small design constriction. Okay, uh, so we have it's stable, nobody adding adding votes, so we will move on. So Cypress, yep. it's a winner, but only sixty five percent, like that's uh, weakest one. Yeah. So yeah, okay, so let's go. Test case number five. So here, th this test case will cover basically um, cross cross domain and cross page uh test uh, or um, case uh, in the in the one test case so what we will be doing we will click on the linkedin icon on the page and that will navigate us to the linkedin page surprisingly but it will open in the new in the new uh window so this is the icon uh, it's in the uh, footer of the of the page and again the code is uh, uh in in not Christoph, uh, it's it's shorter because it really it has some issues with it. In my case, it will be longer, so I will use the IDE yeah. again. So, Christopher, please. So, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. no worries. Uh, here with uh, the multi-tab testing, what you can do to test links is to, for example, test uh, the ref attribute itself, uh, and that's uh, in case of uh, like multi-domain testing. If it's uh, in case of one domain, you could also uh, for example, edit the target attribute of the link element so it doesn't redirect you into a new tab, uh, which is not the case here because it's it's a different domain. Uh, and uh, basically, what happens if you if you actually click the LinkedIn uh, LinkedIn icon, uh, a new tab opens, but uh, the assertion in the URL that it should include LinkedIn.com will fail because Cypress still is running in the context of the Tesfana.com page. So this this test test would absolutely fail, and yeah, there's no way around it really, uh, other than the perhaps two two ways uh, that I've described. There might be more. Okay. So back to you, Radek. Okay. So now it's it's my turn. Uh, this is something that uh, I can do. Uh, so <laughs> at least uh, I have some advantage here <laughs> the first time. If not for the code clarity, at least uh, in the in the realm of functionality, at least uh, that's that's something. So the first uh, first thing uh, again, and on the left it's Playwright, on the right it's Selenium. So I will enlarge it and uh, please look here on this example. So uh, again, we will we will visit the 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 uh, page. And then we will click the button. And then uh, how you work with the events that the click on the button will open the new page, and uh, to um, get the new vari variable which will represent that page, so you can then work with it is pretty simple in Playwright. You will just again use the command promise all. And then uh, here you, you can see uh, this context, which represents the browser, simply put, basically in the in the in the in the playwright. And then you will use wait for event page. So you are waiting basically until the new page in the browser will open or new tab. And then you will click the icon. And when these two will resolve. Uh, you will receive the variable link in page, which represents the page object 
of the browser of that LinkedIn page. And then you can you can very easily work either with the old page or with the new page directly with these objects and uh, their methods which are accessible from these variables. And then you can see that we have the LinkedIn page. I will resolve the URL and then I will just test that the URL uh, is string and then contains LinkedIn com. So we are we are on that. And, and you can see important thing. I don't have to do any focus switching uh, and nothing. It's directly via these uh, these variables. So so pretty simple, I would say. On the Selenium side, however, at least from my point of view, because I'm used to work with with Playwright, it's it's pretty uh, I would say unfriendly. But you may disagree with me. So first of all, uh, again, we will visit the page. We will then uh re resolve that element of that icon we will click on it and then uh i have no issue to say that <laughs> this bit i have to uh, research a little bit and surprisingly on stack overflow uh so yeah and uh, but the very similar code is is uh, available directly on the documentation of the selenium uh so this is the way how to do it basically so you have to work with the windows handles you have to you have to wait until you have basically uh two window handles so the the new window is there and then you have to cycle through them and uh, once you have the different handle than the original first one you will have to switch to it and then you will uh, verify that the title content uh, wait until the title is contains LinkedIn. So the, the page is at least partially loaded because it has title. And then you will verify that the current URL contains LinkedIn. So uh, when I compare these two, I would definitely, from my point of view, nothing, it's again very personal. I would prefer uh, uh, to use Playwright rather than Selenium. And yes, so let's see. I, I suspect a little bit that Cypress will win still. No. <laughs> I, I would actually be surprised in this case because, uh, well, you really don't have a way to work with uh, multi-domain uh, in here, which in this case, it's it's not so limiting, but in some other cases, it might be. Well, for example, in, in, in my uh, in project, when I'm working, I really have to use uh, cross-domain and cross-page like for end-to-end -end tests. So uh, I know when you are developing a, a new application, for example, and so on, that you don't have to use it. And in, in that case, it's fine. Uh, but yeah. uh, sometimes there, there, there's just no way around it. So, yeah. yeah. True, so. Okay, so looks like I have scored at least, at least one. <laughs> so one for Playwright. <laughs> <laughs> One for playwright, at least. Okay, so I'm not a total loser. Yeah, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, great. So uh, we can we can move on. Uh, we have 10, 10 minutes to eleven, and we have test case six. So we have to a little bit little bit speed it up uh, again. So now iframes again. Uh, something that uh, in a, it's a, at least from my experience is a little bit divisive because some people are saying iframes are obsolete and so on. Mm. But and again, for example, <laughs> uh, for example, for example, from my experience uh, on my project where I am uh, working on, uh, we have tons of iframes. And if I, for example, need a tool which can work with iframes, like without a hitch, I don't have time or 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 or, or capacity to to like create or research some some workarounds. Uh, what is this? That's a previous slide. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so in this case, we want to verify that uh, these uh, uh, YouTube videos are basically iframes. So there are present there and there are YouTube iframes. So in this case, we managed to cram it together. If it's too small, please guys, don't forget you can zoom in the in the teams and Christopher, your turn. Thank you. Uh, okay, so basically I was working with only the one iframe 
And uh, well, Cypress cannot access content of an iframe by by default. It it would normally stop where the document part of the iframe begins. Uh, so what you can do is a little workaround here. Uh, basically, first what you have to do is to set the Chrome Web Security to false in Cypress JSON config file, and uh, that's to bypass the security because the browser would block JavaScript to, to and JavaScript access to another domain uh, for security reasons. And once we got that covered, we can, after visiting the page, get the context of the iframe, then make some assertion that we actually have uh, really have the iframe and we can see it, and then wrap it all together. Uh, once we wrap it, uh, we can work uh, with the contents of the iframe as as usual. Okay. Now, uh, regarding uh, regarding uh, Playwright and and Selenium, the the approach is surprisingly very similar. With with one different uh, one main difference is that in in uh, Selenium you have to do the switching uh context or focus switching uh, to the iframes uh, uh main iframe and and uh, given iframe uh, to and back in the in the playwright you don't have to do it so basically in the playwright uh, you will just go to the page and in a case that you are lucky that the iframe has a name then you don't have to resolve the the element of the iframe but you would use the method i don't know it by the memory but uh, it would be something like uh, get frame or something like that and you would provide the name of the iframe and it would resolve the iframe by name however uh, most of the time iframes don't have a name uh, attribute uh, so we just resolve the iframes uh, these two dollars means that uh, it will resolve all iframes so it will be an array as you see here in the, the, in, the in the declaration of the of the of the variable and then oh sorry uh, sorry 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 uh, sorry um, and then uh, basically the test is first we want to verify if actually we found something before we will start to verify individually each um, frame that it is YouTube, which was the, the point of the of the test. And in the Selenium, uh, it's uh, as I said, it's very similar. You will find all the iframes. You will you will test if it's an array, and the only difference, uh, big difference, is that you have to switch each time to the iframe. Then you have to resolve the title and verify if it's contain YouTube, and then you have to switch back to the default main iframe. Otherwise, you will get that annoying stale element reference error. Uh, so yeah, so you have to do that switching. Uh, so in this case, it's pretty pretty similar. And again your time to shine <laughs> so here with cypress it's a little bit tricky but in my opinion it's not too bad you can you can still reuse it as a function but uh, well i have to admit that uh, what playwrights and also in this case selenium provide uh, are probably uh, a little bit better solutions So, okay, so I guess it looks like I'm. <laughs> uh, if you want to, we can wait a bit time. more. Oh my God, <laughs> that's, that's better than I expected uh, <laughs> today. Uh, I'm so happy. Um, <laughs> so this is all you wanted. Yeah, that's that this <laughs> my day. Like two 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 test cases, one it's like in a row what, as well. Can I, what, what can I want more, you know? Uh <laughs> okay, uh we will move on. Thanks for the voting, guys. So we have uh three test cases left. So I'll let pop up. This will be I guess very quick. Uh 
mm, because it is, it is. Uh, this is something that we had to at least I did the, I did it by fake because our uh, test site don't have our site don't have pop-ups. Uh, Christoph uh, did it. Or he will explain it to you basically. So oh, yeah. why we not move on? So basically, the test case is that uh, we just want to verify that on the page uh, the this the there will be the pop-up will display and we want to assert that the pop-up is displayed. And uh, since Tessena doesn't have the pop-ups, uh, I am uh, in in Playwright and Slim. I'm faking it in, by injecting, uh, and Christoph does it a little bit different, and he will tell you why. Yeah, I couldn't really really fake it by injecting it anywhere because uh, Cypress automatically accepts alerts. And when I try to inject it, maybe I was doing something wrong. But when I've tried to inject it, upon the the moment when the alert has popped up, uh, the whole testing has stopped, basically. Uh, so I've decided to just go to uh, like a testing page, uh, which is the, the the URL that you can see in the CI visit command. And uh, then I've uh, declared a stop uh, to listen for the alerts. And uh, I've clicked the button that uh, basically fires the alert. And since uh, Cypress automatically accepts alerts. Uh, all you can do is uh, assert, for example, the contents of the alert, which is actually all you really need to do. Uh, the behavior is a bit different with uh, like confirms or dialogues where you type in some some text. Of course, you can manipulate it a little, a little bit more than than alerts. But uh, yeah, in principle, it's it's quite similar. Okay, so regarding Playwright, it's uh, Playwright does the same as the Cypress. So he auto accepts uh, or auto dismisses uh, the the pop-ups, uh, the standard pop-ups. But you can you can fake it anyway. Uh, so as you can see, what what you want to do is that you will again set the listener at the beginning for the dialogue event, and then uh, if you want to test that the dialogue is the alert dialogue and it will pop up uh, when the uh, when the dialogue is is event is is fired basically. So then I have the I have the boolean uh, set uh, variable set, and then when the, if the dialogue uh, is of the type alert i will just set it to true uh, and uh, then the important thing is uh, i have to accept the dialogue otherwise it will happen the same with the as christoph with the cypress the 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 testing would stop so i have to accept it if i'm doing like this you have to uh, you have to uh, accept it uh, the playwright will not automatically close it in this case and then once the listener is set, I will go to the to the page and then I am faking the, the uh, alert pop up. So in the in the case of playwright, you can add script. I You can either add a string like this or you can have a script in the file and then you can provide a path. Uh, so in this case, it's simple. So it's just a string. I'm sorry again. Uh, and then and then uh, you just uh, Verify that the dialogue check the boolean is true, and in the in the Selenium is uh, is uh, similar. Uh, it's just you will execute a script which will inject the alert, and then uh, you you because the alert has its own um, type, so you will just uh, try to you will define the the variable, which here it is undefined still. It's of that, of that type, but it's undefined. And then if you manage to switch to the alert, uh, it means it's not undefined anymore. So the test just verifies it's not undefined. And then you have to accept to, to actually hide it. Uh, this solution in the Selenium, I would say, looks much more simpler. However, it's not uh, like um, it's not. It will work only if you know exactly when the pop up will come. Uh, but in the playwright, the listener will work anytime, so you can just set it and it will handle the alert anytime it will it will come during your test or your, or your code execution. It's pretty neat. Okay, so I have to admit. again, guys, time to shine.
So, and the next case uh, we'll be talking about is file upload, which most of you, if you do some test automation, have probably come across. You know, I'm starting to getting the feeling, Christopher, surprisingly, yeah. that the main factor is the is the is the just the simple or or diff, or more complicated the code structure. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, yeah. Yeah. maybe. It's like maybe not, not about though. functionality, but it's about how clean it looks like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is of course the factor. Yeah, yeah. I will probably have I to agree. write. Yeah, I will absolutely. have to write to the to the Microsoft guys. Like, do you don't you want to redo your API to have it like <laughs> more sexier. more Cypress like? So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. guys. Uh, anyone want to vote? Uh, or we can move on. So Cypress is a winner in this case. Selenium is a second. Playwright is is the third. It's a little bit surprising to me, but what can you do? And okay, the next the is the adding file. So here we will be working with the with the standard when you, for example, have a form and for example in CV applications, this is pretty standard stuff. You want to add some file, so upload the file. So here we will be testing that when you click on this. Uh, you we basically add the file and we will be verifying that after you will provide the file there will the the new element will, will appear with the name of the file and that will be in this case verification that the file was added you could of course of verify for example by send, sending the 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 form that the file is there as well but uh, since this is a production we won't, don't want our hr like <laughs> suffer with testing uh, testing uh, files so so this will have to do okay so again we managed to get it in also christopher please all right so this gets a little bit tricky when you're using um just a bundled functionality of uh, Cypress. Uh, what you would normally probably do uh, is to get a library that handles this better than uh, than what you can see here, because what you need to do is uh, to first declare your uh, attachment or your file as a fixture. Then uh, you have to use some uh, JavaScript, in this case, specifically the blob uh, library, which is bundled inside Cypress. Uh, in order to get that image and give it the ability to transfer it uh, using the JavaScript APIs. And once the image is, is finally uploaded, uh, you, you can work with it further. For example, as you can see here, just assert that the, that the file is, is really there on the page. That all? that's that's it there yeah. <laughs> okay so in my case it's a little bit little bit simpler but uh i'm starting to doubt that it will have any effect it's <laughs> 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 just a joke guys uh so uh basically again we will visit the 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 site with the form and then in the in the in case of playwright we have a simple method uh, of the page object of the of the page instance uh, set input files so basically you will you will provide a selector of that element of that button and then you will provide a path to the file you want to you want to uh, upload and that's all and it will provide that it will provide that the the, the file will be there added and then we will verify that that element uh, with the name of the of the file will be visible and in the in the selenium it's actually pretty simple as well again you will resolve that element and in the Selenium, we will do it via commands and keys, uh, which uh, you will provide a path to the to the to the file, and that's all. Then you will again verify that the that the element showing the name of the file is there, and that's all. So I would say that's pretty simple stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm really curious in <laughs> this case. Uh, so am I. So am I actually. <laughs> I mean, in this case, 
I can I can agree with the with the results. Uh, it was not the usual uh, sexy solution on Cypress side. Christopher, that was you. Uh, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. Uh, no, I'm not voting. <laughs> and it wasn't me either uh, <laughs> fixing the vote. <laughs> it's funny. Um, Okay, uh, since lots a lot of people left because we are over time, yeah. I would say that 11, 11 votes is enough, and we will we will move to the to the to the last uh, test case. So third yeah, win, first for... win for playwright. Wow, oh, it's a... oh, my... <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now somebody is trolling, like definitely. <laughs> uh, for But sure, it's will... not me. I will I will take it. Okay, uh, so the last test case is the drop down selector. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. This this was a little tricky, but it was not our fault. Basically, uh, this the, the the test is basically a little bit like uh, artificial test, because uh, here we have the job title. It's the selector, and we want to verify that when you select that button, it's it's uh, the the option. Sorry, it's it's selected. However, the implementation of the form is such that when you select the 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 option in the in the selector. Uh, there is no change in the in the DOM. There is no change, so so there is yeah. nothing like the option selected or or something like that. It's it's not there. I don't know, Christopher, if you if you notice this, but you uh, you yes. cannot you cannot, you cannot verify it. So I, so I actually think I can. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Basically. So let's let's get into it. Let, yeah. Let's get into it. Yeah. Uh, one second. Right. Uh, so basically, upon visiting the base URL of slash en, etc., etc., uh, we just get uh, into the context of the select, and then mm -hmm. in the test, by uh, asserting the value, we can actually uh, verify that it has selected the correct option. If uh, the parameter would have been anything else but test automation engineer, the test would fail, uh, which is what I've tried as well. So this is a way to uh, basically achieve and test uh, what what we wanted to. Huh. Okay. It doesn't doesn't. Yeah. I I. Yeah, that, pretty that's, pretty that's, simple. That's, 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 yeah. That's 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 good. Uh, I did it a little bit differently, and and I I admit it it's not like something which is which is 100 or maybe 80 percent uh, like foolproof or, or or correct. Basically, what I did was that I in the in the playwright you just uh, resolve the element which will be the selector, and uh, then uh, I you can select the options uh, either via the name of the value or via the index. And so on. And so, uh, what I did was that I selected the option via index because I knew that the test engineer is uh, at the index four. And then, uh, what I did is I resolved all options of that uh, of that selector and just verified that the options for uh, the text is 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 equal to test automation engineer, which is something which is something uh, we we don't really know if the selection happened. But at least if the selection happened, uh, uh, it it should be it should be the test automation engineer. Uh, Actually, yeah. looking at this, uh, you could have used a similar approach to mine, right? Just use the yep. try assertion library. Probably, and, uh, probably, probably yes. Yeah. I would have to look at it, but but uh, but probably yes. But I I do it at least like this, because I'm not sure if I did. Uh, If, for example, the select options and the index, it would fail. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's not like good. This test is not good. But <laughs> I just wanted to do it at least something. I I, I must admit that I didn't uh, didn't look. I didn't like. Uh, but I still, I I didn't see any change in the in the in the DOM. So I just couldn't. Yeah, there uh, there is none. There is none. Yeah, yeah. And in the in the selenium, it's it's accordingly as the playwright. Just the syntax is little little longer because of the of the waiting and and element locating. Otherwise, we are selecting. Yeah, and uh, just one note: JavaScript version of Selenium library does not have support for the select element. 
So uh, what <laughs> I needed to do, I just needed to to locate the select, uh, then uh, locate again from the select the option and then the index of that array, like to click it actually. Yeah, so so this is something that it's kind of shame that they don't have that. I don't know. I'm sorry again. I don't know why, but uh, but uh, yeah, you have to do it like this if you want to interact with the with the options of the of the of the select select element. Yeah, and last time to vote, guys. Yeah, it's our last one. Yeah, this will be 100 to Cypress, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, so. Not to delay, uh, Cypress is clear winner in this case. Yeah. Playwright is clear loser. Uh, well, actually, Playwright had three wins for itself. Uh, I mean, during like, the course. In this, in this case, uh, we have like pure zero here. So, and now we have results. Yeah. So, Christoph, Christoph, if you could tell us. Okay, I'll announced the winner, which uh, in this case was Cypress. Uh, second, Playwright. Third, Selenium. Of course, it very much depends on uh, the scope of the test cases, uh, which we have defined. And uh, it's not at all uh, meant to be an indicator of which framework is the best overall, only which framework you liked the best in uh, this scope of our test cases. 